name's Jamie Miller and I'm a first generation UC instructor under Liam Morrison. What I want to give you in this segment, which is one of the drills that I use to stand up grappling. It's a great drill for attitude development and a great way to train your heads, knees and elbows in a stand up clinch position. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get something from it. First drill that we're going to do is just a warm up drill. Okay, so it's basically just uh, looking at a couple of basic grappling positions. We're going to start with uh, no pads and then we're going to quickly put in the pads. Okay, I just want to give you an understanding of these drills first. So basically, these are swim drills. So we have swim high, which is like a, a, like a Thai um, collar and tie drill, and then we've got swim low, which is uh, a pummeling drill. Okay, so um, swim high is basically you have one hand on the back of the, the head, okay? Ideally not on the neck, more higher up on the head. And then the other hand is on the uh, forearm here, the tie, okay? From here, all that's gonna happen is, I, I, ideally I'd be seeking to come in and take full clinch. This is what I'd be looking to get a dominant position. But what we're gonna do is, is that as I come in, he's gonna do exactly the same. So he's gonna come in as well, and then we get to the opposite side. So this is why it's 50-50, okay? We do it again, and you can see it's like a swimming motion, okay? So understand here, what I want to do is I want to, from the very beginning, I want to install in my students good habits, okay? Now, because we're not necessarily training for, to, for sport, um, and we're training for the street, then you need to make sure that you're tucking your head, okay? I mean, if you look at something like uh, Lapaway, um, then obviously they incorporate headbutts, so they uh, need to tuck their head. But if you look at something like traditional Thai and just Thai boxing, they're quite happy to stay, you know, like this and with their heads up, their necks up, um, because they're not incorporating headbutts. But as soon as you're up like this, okay, you're open. I'm open to his head, okay. Where if I just tuck my head, the only thing that he's headbutting now is the top of my head, which is obviously not ideal because he's as likely to knock himself out as me. So from the beginning, you want to make sure that your, your head is tucked, okay? From here, all we're going to do is swim. So we swim here, swim, swim, here, like this. This is the first drill, okay? Like I said, this is just a warm-up. You can change legs here if you want. It doesn't really matter. But this is the first drill. The second drill, which is the swim high, is the swim low so from here this is a, a pummeling drill so basically we have one hand under okay and then we have one hand over so one hand's under it's either on the back or higher up and the other hand's on the back of the tricep and we're touching chest to chest okay same thing again here you want to make sure that your head is down rather than up okay i mean i'm vulnerable to his head anyway because of the height difference so I'm, I'm vulnerable to the, because his head's below mine. So it's easy for him just to come across and swipe his head across. So I want to try where possible just to keep my head tucked as we change, okay? Yeah, again, you can swap feet. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but you can swap feet. But to begin with, it doesn't really matter. Just uh, make sure the body's going. So we swim. Yeah. So the dominant position here would be that I come for double unders, okay? But to stop that, he swims in at the same time, yeah. So this is the two drills that I want you to learn first. All you do then is you just put them together, okay? And the way we put them together is in, uh, we do sort of a play way, okay? So it's really important when you're doing this type of training that you learn to play. We're not competing here. There's a time for competing and there's a time for playing. And uh, this is about basically learning to follow me first. So he's gonna follow me and then I'm gonna follow him and then you can start playing and uh, mixing it up. But for now, he's gonna follow me. I'm gonna go through the swim high and the swim low. Okay, so we start here and we swim high. Yeah, so. Then we swim low. Swim high. Swim low. And 
this is how you would go. The next thing would be he would lead and I would follow. Okay? And it's 50 50, and then we start to swim. So let's go. Going to swim low. Yeah. That's fun. Right, so now we're getting a bit more warmer, and you've got the uh, basic two drills that the, the rest of the training that we're going to do is going to um, build upon. Um, I want you to just uh, have a little free play, so a free grappling play. And this is where it's really important that we uh, we play and we don't compete. Okay. So the idea of this is is that sometimes I'll feed him energy, and sometimes he'll feed me energy. And uh, we might go one for one to gain a position, or we might just play and move around. But the, what we're not doing is we're not competing to try and get uh, dominance over each other. Okay. Because when you when you do that, or if there's a time and place to do that, but when you do that, what ends up happening is you don't try anything new, okay? So it's really important when you're doing these type of drills that you just play and you flow, okay? So we'll show you an example of that. Yeah, again, I'm just going to keep the pads on. Um, you know, if I was doing this without the pads, I would, I would first start without the pads and then I'd put the pads back in, okay? But I just want to show you how you can still grapple to a degree with pads on, okay? So all we're going to do now is just... Free grappling, okay? Yes, let's go. So as you can see, you can still grapple with the pads. Obviously, yes, I am limited. I can't use my hands, but uh, I still get a good enough of a grapple and I still get to give him a good workout and he still gets to feel the energy. Plus, it's a great way to warm up. What we're going to look at here is just an attribute development drill. This is a, a drill that we can work both left and right for repetitions um, that will give you loads of practice on striking. This is not how you would fight the fight. So the first thing we're going to look at is how you can strike from the collar and tie. Okay, So we'll do it from this side so that you can see. Okay, So we're in this collar and tie, which is like I said, this is 50-50. That's what I said at the beginning. Basically it means that he has the same attacking capabilities as I have. I'm not in a dominant position and nor is he. Okay? But what a good habit to have here, this is what I was saying at the beginning about building up good habits. What you always want to do is you always want to make sure, not only is your head tucked and you've got good base, but that you're also locking and clamping onto this arm. Because if I don't clamp onto this arm, yeah, he'll just pull it out and then elbow me. So if I'm looking to get back to my primary weapons and he doesn't know what he's doing and he's not holding onto this arm, then all I'm going to do is literally pull this out and then elbow him. Okay? But because he knows what he's doing, he's going to be holding this arm, which makes it difficult for me to just pull it out. Okay? If I feel that resistance when I pull it out, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch to another skill set. And I'm just going to literally just drop that headbutt in. Okay? That should hopefully loosen him up so that I can pull this elbow out and put the elbow in. So the way that we would feed that on pads is, if I just turn you around for this, so they can see. From this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop him out. And he's going to put the pad up. Now you can either put it to your head like he is, or you can create a little space. Understand that if you create a little space, what you need to try and do is you need to try and lean back. Because the objective here is to replace the target with a pad. If he creates this space and he puts it here, this is not where the head was. The head is here. Okay. Either way, I want you to present this pad. From here, all I'm going to do is with my tucked head is I'm just going to literally pull him in. As I headbutt here, just this little headbutt, okay? 
So we'll look at that a few times. So let's come back to this starting position. So we're here, I pop, he puts the pad up, I pull him into the head there. And again, go back to the beginning, I pop, I pull him back into the head there. One more time, pop, pull him into the head there. Okay? So all we're going to do now, just so that you see how we put this into a flow drill, we're going to go from left to right, okay? So, I'm here, I pop him, he puts the pad up, and I head back. From here, we swap to this position. I pop him, he puts the pad up, and I head back. We swap, I pop, head back, here. Right, so now we've looked at the uh, headbutt, now what we want to do is put in the elbow, okay? So um, I've now put on the pads because I want to show you actually how to feed the pads. So if you just turn this around for a second, okay? Because we feed in different ways, so I'm trying to teach him how to feed, but I always say the best thing to do is just learn from experience. So the way that I learned this was holding the pad and I put it to my head and uh, I found that I was still receiving impact through the pad. So uh, I soon found a way of holding the pads where I wasn't receiving impact. But it takes time, okay? It's a lot easier for me to teach him the physical than it is for me to teach him the, the pad work. So that's why I recommend if you get a chance, you want to check out uh, the pad comp stuff that we do, um, where you get a much better understanding of actually how we feed the pads, okay? But like I said, it takes time. It takes time to develop. So if we go back to this 50-50 again, all he's going to do, he's going to do it to a count. He's going to pop me out for one, and this is the first count. Okay, from here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to present the pad. Okay, I've already sort of got my shoulder, it's sort of leaning against my shoulder. I'm not really putting my shoulder in because I don't want him to headbutt my shoulder, but there's space. You can see that there's space between the pad and my head. Okay, from there, he puts in the headbutt. Okay, all that's going to happen now is he takes this arm out, so he pulls this arm out here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my shoulder in. Okay, and then he elbows here. Okay. So if we come back, so the first count is one, pops. I put the pad up. Second count, two, he headbutts. Okay? Third count, he pulls the arm out and elbows. Good. Okay? And what I want to try and do is to lean back. Okay? Because I want to create the space. Because I understand that if I put the pad here, then that's not where my head was. If we look at it without the pads, if he popped me here, my head's here. So what I don't want to do is, is put this pad here, because now it feels very close to him. It feels unrealistic to where my head is. My head's here. So the, what I do is he'll, he'll let this arm a little bit loose. I'll lean back to create that space. Now he'll put in the head here, and now I'll drop my shoulder in as he pulls his arm out, and then he hits over with the elbow. Okay. What you want to be trying to do here is hit with the point of your elbow. Now, obviously, for him, it's uh, slightly different because of a uh, size difference. Maybe in this position, he wouldn't be elbowing me. Um, it works really well the other way around, but I wanted to show you actually how to feed the pads. Okay? So, we do it to my count. So, ready? One, two, three. Good. And again, does that feel all right? Yep. Good. All right, and again, one, two, three. Right, now let's put it together, okay? Ready, go. Good. And again, go. Good. And again, go. Good. All right, so what you can see there is we just worked it off one side and how lot I would build it up. Once you've done that on both sides, then you start to add it back in to the swim drill, okay? So good way of doing this, as I say with all of this, is just start slowly, okay? So, we're in this position, he pops me, head butts, pulls the arm out, elbows. From here, we swap, so it's a swap to this position, up, that's it. Now he pops me, head butts, there, that's it, elbows, good. All right, so let's just work that side for a second. So pop, head butt, elbow, good. Again, pop, head butt, elbow. All right, do you think you can put it together now? Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so let's go slowly. So from here, go. Ah, wrong elbow. Okay, it's a good example. You see here, he can't elbow me with this arm because this arm's in the way. The only arm that he can elbow me with is the free hand that he created. So understand that I'm right-handed, so I always ideally want to hit him from the right side. So the idea here is if I'm in this grapple with him, if he doesn't know what he's doing, all I'm going to do is just pull this arm free. If I pull this arm free, I can just hit him. 
Or I can elbow him. Yeah. Face. <laughs> but yeah, I can hit him. That's what I want to do. But when I go to pull this arm free, because he's monitoring this arm, he's got it in check, we get this. Okay? And if I get this here, then what I do is I pop and then put in the head. And that hopefully now releases this arm enough so I can pull it out and then bury the elbow in. Okay? And from there, I attach and put in the knee, which we're going to get on to next. But like I said, this is an attribute development drill. So what I'm looking at is basically building it so that you can put it into this swimming drill like we did at the beginning. Okay? Let's go again. So pop, head back, elbow. Good. And you come back into the same position and swim. Good. Pop, head back, elbow. This arm. There we go. Now we come back. Kick. Pop. Head back, elbow. Good. Pop, head back, elbow. See what I'm doing here is I'm slightly going and angling the pad back towards him, give him a nice surface to uh, hit. Okay? So we'll just do that a couple more times and we'll get into a bit of a flow now. Okay? Go. So what I recommend with all these types of drills is that you, you have protection, okay? You want a good groin guard and you want a mouth guard, okay? There is times, especially when learning this, where you, you're probably likely to eat a shot, okay? So it's really important that you do have the protection on, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to layer it up with the knee. So from this, all I'm going to do is we're going to pop him. He puts the pad up, okay? Like I said before, he wants that little bit of space here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him in like this, okay, to create that collision effect as I bury my head in like that, okay. From here, I pull this hand free, and all he's going to do is he just slightly angles the pad back, and then I elbow with the point of my elbow, okay. From there, he just drops that single pad. Now, this is where I said you want a groin guard. I don't want him to drop both pads because I'm holding on to this arm still, and I'm pinched up to him here. From here, I'm just going to switch, and I'm going to put in that knee to the groin, okay? So, from here, I pop, head butt, pull this arm free, elbow, attach as I switch, bury that knee in, okay? So understand that you've got these little incidental shots here. You always want to practice these, okay? So when I, after I've elbowed here, when I go to switch, as he drops it, this is my incidental strike here, okay? And at the same time as I strike, I switch, okay? So, from the beginning, in this position, I pop, head butt, my elbow, I switch. I put in knee, okay? Just work like that. So from here, I pop, head butt, elbow, knee. Again, pop, head butt, elbow, knee. And again, pop, head butt, elbow, Knee. See how you're, you're slightly starting to bring the pad closer to you? Yep. Try and keep that gap because, I mean, you'll take a shot. You don't mind a bit of impact to the head, but it's, it's not good, okay? Like I said, what you want to try and do is just create that space here. If needs be, you roll your shoulder and try and tuck your shoulder to keep that space, okay? And then when the pad comes on the other side, you turn it so it's slightly on the shoulder. But always use your shoulder, keep it away from your head, okay? A couple more times. So pop, head butt, elbow, knee. Good. Let's try and get down to a flow now.
as you can see there, it's a great drill for uh, just literally getting loads of repetitions left to right. Now, there is limitations to doing this type of training um, or this type of pad feed, is, is that especially for something like the groin shot, um, you need to sort of pull your shot. That's why I said at the beginning, you want to ideally wear a, a groin guard so that if you don't get it there um, and it's not in place, then you've got something uh, to fall back on. Okay. Uh, the best thing you can do with any of this sort of stuff is learn to ride the shots. Okay. Um, the thing is with the with the groin. Normally, what we try to do where possible is to drop the hand so that there's two. Okay. And what this does is it supports the other hand, and it means that you're taking less pressure through your wrists, where you can now start to add in more impact. But for this drill that we're doing here, I want him to keep that, that tie up, okay? So what I mean by that is, let me keep his pads on. One of the ways you can do this type of thing is that when I've done this and put in this elbow here, he can drop both pads here and I can grab hold of him and then put in the knee. Now what this does is it means that I get to put more impact into the pads. This means that I get a nice solid shot uh, without hurting his wrists, okay? But the reason that I'm not doing it this way is because that's not the way I would employ it, okay? The way that I would employ it, if I'm in this position, is I'll keep hold of this. I want to keep. I want to learn to be able to use all my tools from this tie-up position. So when I pop him and headbutt him here, I'll keep hold of this because I don't want him to let go. If he lets this go, if I let go, then he can now start hitting me back, and I don't want that. I've got him tied up here. I put this in, I put that elbow in. I keep this tie up from here. You want to learn to be able to do this and you also want to learn to be able to rag him in these positions, you see? So this is why I want him to keep that tie up. What we just looked at there was um, how we can strike from the uh, collar and tie position. So I class this as the swim high. Now what we're going to look at is the swim low, so this is the pummel position, okay? So, we're in this under over position where I'm onto the back of his tricep and my hands up behind his back. From here, all he's going to do is he's going to pop with his shoulder to create that space, okay? All I'm going to do is bring the pad up. Yet again, what I've done, if he actually pop me, pop me, is this is where I'm going to be. This is where he put that head button, here. So what I want to do is I want to replace my head, so there you are, with the pad. So this is where the pad is, okay, where my head is. And all I'm going to do is lean back. Now the pad is where my head was, okay. From here, he's going to headbutt. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my shoulder in and then he's going to elbow. So you could, this time, you can elbow with Have the rear hand, yeah. So from here, you pop, elbow, and there you go. That's it. Again, pop, headbutt, elbow. Good. Pop, headbutt. So understand, uh, same as before, okay? If I know what I'm doing, I'm holding on this in, in this position, okay? You might want to just pull this arm out, but you can't, okay? So from here, you pop me, yeah? Then you put in the headbutt, and then you do it with your free hand, here, okay? Then if you wanted to swap hands, you could go to the other hand, yep. okay? So you pop, headbutt, elbow, good. And again, pop, headbutt, elbow, good. All right, so now we're going to just put that back into the swim drill where we're practicing left and right. You can do the same as what we did for the first drill where you could just isolate the headbutt. So you do headbutt on both sides, and then you can do the swimming drill so you're practicing it for repetitions. Then you can add in the headbutt elbow, do it on one side, do it on the other, and then mix it back in. Um, for now, just to keep it short, we're just going to go straight into doing the, the headbutt and elbow off both sides. But we're going to start slow, okay? And then as you start to get a bit of rapport with each other, you start to pick up the uh, tempo. Understand with any of the types of drills, uh, there's two real key things. The first is that I'm safe. That's the priority, okay? I need to be safe because it's me that's gonna get hurt in this drill. That's the first thing that you need to make sure is in place. The next thing is, is does it feel right for him? There needs to be feedback. Now, obviously, if this is a, a, a teacher-student relationship, then it's really important that the teacher asks because the student won't necessarily have the confidence to tell you that it's wrong. Now, um, you know, when I'm doing it with him, 
I know when it's wrong because I know I'm not being forgetted, but I know that I'm doing it right because I've done it a lot. So I know that if it doesn't feel right, it's not because I'm doing it wrong, it's because he's holding the pads wrong. Okay, so it's uh, I need to correct it. So the two things that I'm looking at is first of all, is it safe? Am I happy to do this drill without getting hit? Okay, and then I'm looking at what well, does it feel right for him? Okay, this is the, the two key things. So we're going to start slow. Like I said, I'm in control, so I'll speed it up. When I feel that he knows what he's doing, and I'm happy with the way that he's hitting and the way that I'm holding the pads, then I'll start speeding up the drill. So we're here, he pops, headbutts, elbows. Good, and then we swim here, and we swap, he pops, headbutts, elbows. Good, swim in, pop, headbutt, elbows. Good, and we stop. You can see there how when we start picking up the pace, how I start really adapting it. Because he's starting to throw that big wielding elbow over the top, I really am leaning back, putting my shoulder behind it and trying to separate my head from that pad as much as possible. So that if it does come through, so if I'm here and it does come through, then hopefully it misses. Okay? But this is why I said, you know, always you should always be wearing a mouth guard, because you will eat a couple um, to begin with. But the more you do this and the more you get confident with it, um, the less chance you, you have of, of uh, getting an elbow to the face. Okay? So now we've looked at the uh, head by an elbow, now we want to finish off with putting in the knee. Okay? So put in this so low position. So here, two pops, head butts, elbows. From here now, unlike the other drill, I get to put both pads down. He attaches, he switches, and then he puts in the knee. Okay, so now he can put a little bit more impact in with the knee because I'm taking it on two wrists and two hands rather than one, okay? So, in this position, he pops, head butts, elbows. Here, puts in the knee. Good, let's go there again. Pop, head butt, elbow, in the knee. Good, and again, pop. Good. All right, so now we're going to work the other side and we're going to put it into the swim drill. So we're here, so swim, here, pop, head butt, elbow, knee. Good, swim back in, here, pop, head butt, elbow, knee. Good, here, pop. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to pull that together. Like I said at the beginning, this is an attribute development drill. So the idea of this drill is, is to build on the attributes of uh, striking at extreme close quarters. So we're looking at primarily here using the head, knees and elbows. Okay? And the way that we're working it in these swim drills is so that we can get plenty of repetitions on both sides. A uh, good thing about this is not only do you get plenty of repetitions, but it becomes a bit of a workout, so it's fun. Okay? So, uh, yeah, I want to put it together now. So, like I said before, in, in terms of this, at this stage, I'm in charge, but we could change it so that he becomes in charge. All I mean by in charge is, is that I'm leading. I'm the one that's going to decide at this stage whether I'm doing the high tie swim drill or just the collar and tie swim drill or the uh, low swim drill, which is the pummeling drill. Okay? So we'll start high, we'll do a few reps both sides and then I'll just go into low and he'll feel it. Okay? I might say I'm going to swim low so he's just aware of what I'm doing and then we'll go into the swim low. Um, eventually you get to the point where you can quickly change and it can be, he can maybe um, initiate the change or I initiate the change, but first you want somebody that's leading and somebody that's following. In this case, I'm leading and he's following. Okay? Right. Pop. Now 
come to life. Shoom, 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 That's all right. All right, this is a good point, okay? So once you start getting into this flow, what you'll find sometimes is that you break flow. And you also find that you don't necessarily need to elbow with one side or another, okay? So sometimes when we practice this, you know, one of us or the other one will fuck up. But there is no real fuck up, okay? At the end of the day, you just continue with the drill. We're not going massively hard at this stage um, because the type of drill that we're doing, okay? We can obviously do a drill where we specifically set the pad drill that I'm doing and we can take it to the conclusion where we actually take it to the floor and finish it off. If you're doing a drill like that, that's a fight development drill. That's when you really start looking at putting in uh, loads of impact. But at this stage, what we're looking at is just creating that flow and just putting it into your uh, motor memory, the, the skills that you need. So what you'll find with this is that, like I said, sometimes he'll get it wrong or I'll get it wrong and you wanna just carry on, okay? So I don't really care if he manages to pull this elbow free or this elbow free. As long as he's creating space, hit him with an elbow, hit him with a knee, okay? This is the important thing. So if we're here like this, which is not necessarily, this is the pole position, and he pops me here, okay? He puts in this head, yeah? He can't elbow him in this, and he puts in that elbow. If I'm in this position here, which is where I should have been, when he pops me, he puts in the head, he can put in that elbow, or he can pull this elbow and put in that elbow. It doesn't actually matter, okay? So when you get into a flow, like I said, what's important at this stage is that he is slightly pulling his shots. He still gets to make impact, which is good for him. Right, so what we've been looking at in this uh, segment is um, how you can fight in extreme close quarters. In the main, we've been looking at uh, just an attribute drill um, so that you can get loads of uh, reps and uh, build up the flow. So we've obviously been looking at it more from a pad feeding perspective and how you can feed the pads. We've looked at uh, the use of the, the small pads and uh, how well they work with, with these type of flowing drills because, uh, you know, as I said it before, they, they're, because they're smaller, they're just easier to get in the gaps and be able to swim in between. Um, obviously, there are, um, there are disadvantages. The fact that they're small it means it offers you less protection, which means that there's more chance of you getting injured. Um, so that's why when we're doing these flow drills where there's a lot more going on, there's a lot more chance for me to get hit. We sort of slowed it down a little bit um, and he was pulling his shots a little bit just in case that he missed. But that's where I go back to the fact, you know, I could really be wearing a head guard, a mouth guard, a groin guard, a belly pad, this all adds up. Uh, for extra protection in case we we, we do fuck up okay um, then you have these pads slightly bigger pads um, when we start going into more sort of specific drills where we know what the outcome is and we know it's a sort of set thing then uh, you know the big pads the big pads are fine okay um, obviously they just offer you more protection but when you start doing this type of training um, you will find especially when you start looking at grappling you will fuck up Okay? you will end up in other positions. But what's really important is, is that you understand that it doesn't really matter where I end up. As long as we stick to sort of the, the, the drill, which is create space, put in the headbutt, put in the elbow, put in the knee, and finish the fight. Okay, um, There was quite a few times throughout this and throughout all the times that I trained that I don't end up in the correct position that I was aiming for. We end up in some sort of bastardization. But we still generally find a way to, uh, to get the drill out. We still find a way to pop, put in the headbutt, put in the elbow, put in the knee. And you'll see that if you look back over. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got something from it. Thank you.